Hello learners, this is Top Notch Online Team Day Learning by Thaddeus Baluga, the Ocean of Chemistry. This is the UPA Command Center, the headquarters of chemistry in East Africa. Things can only get bigger and better, introducing the best and the biggest education channel for you. Top Notch Online TV is here to unmask, to unpack, to unwrap, unlock, delve deep, illuminate, and demystify those tough high school subjects, among them chemistry, with the best and renowned teachers from top schools in Kenya, you are sure to get nothing short of the best. There is no better place to be other than top notch. Education has never been this easy. We are all the secrets to help you pass in your exam. In our today's lesson, I'm going to navigate through the topic of nitrogen as compound and I'm taking you through the Ostward process, which is the industrial manufacture of nitric acid. And as always, the Yupa Command Center, we don't disappoint. So get ready as we try to navigate through the deep waters of chemistry and you'll be ready to suck wisdom right from the Yupa Command Center. We are talking about the Ostwald process. In any industrial process, the first thing to understand is what are the raw materials and what are the conditions. The main raw materials in in Ostwald process is we need air, we need ammonia, and you need water. So that's the main raw materials. You need air, you need ammonia, and you need water. What are the optimum conditions? What are the optimum conditions that are required here? The optimum conditions here is you require platinum catalyst, which is mixed with rhodium as a promoter. So many publications will give it as platinum rhodium, but the catalyst is platinum. Rhodium is a promoter. You also require a pressure of nine atmospheres, and you also require a temperature of 700 to 900 degrees Celsius. Very important. But remember in an examination setup, when you try to give the condition, you just have to give a temperature within that range, like a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. So we, we have said that the first uh, raw material is ammonia. Where do we get the ammonia from? The upper process. So the upper process gives us the ammonia. So once you have the ammonia now, and here we have now already we have the ammonia and we have air. We have said you obtain ammonia because ammonia is not found freely in air, but we can find air. Now, by the way, we normally use air and not oxygen in this industrial process because the air is cheaper. It's very cheap to get air as opposed to oxygen. So once you have ammonia from our process and you have air, the first step is to purify the gases. So the gases that part through the purifier. Why do we need to purify the gases? This is to remove impurities that could poison the catalyst, or rather that can reduce the efficiency of the catalyst. Then what we have now, the purified ammonia and air, it is taken to the compressor. At the compressor, the gases are compressed to the required, to the required pressure. Remember, pressure increases the, 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 the this, this is a reversible reaction. So when now you have the, 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 you need require high pressure because the reactants here are gases. And therefore now you need to compress them so that the particles are brought closer to each other, leading to more effective collision and therefore increase the rate of reaction. So that's why we need high pressure to make sure that the, the, the rate of reaction increases. So once you have ammonia and air that has already been compressed, they are taken to the heat exchanger. The role of the heat exchanger is to heat the incumbent gases. That is ammonia and air. They are heated to the required temperature. Remember we said we require a temperature of 700 or rather 800 degrees Celsius. So we preheat the incumbent gases. So it's also used, as you can be able to see now, one, the, 
the compressed ammonia and air that are already hot, they already been preheated, they are taken to the catalytic chamber. At the catalytic chamber, the gases have been purified, they have been compressed and they have been preheated. And now we have the catalyst that is platinum rhodium, platinum mixed with rhodium. So all the conditions for reaction are, are ready now. So in the catalytic chamber, the first reaction occurs, and that is the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. Look at this reaction here. The reaction in the catalytic chamber. We have ammonia reacting with oxygen to form nitrogen 2 oxide and steam. We are getting steam here because the temperatures are very high. The temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius. So this is the first reaction. And it's important for the student to understand that many students, when this question comes up in the exam, they pick this one as nitrogen 4 oxide. It's not nitrogen 4 oxide. It is nitrogen 2 oxide. That's the first reaction. That's the first product that is formed here. And the main product here, this one is very much important for you as the learner to understand because it's likely what is going to be tested. So now, once you have the gas, you have produced the gas, the nitrogen 2 oxide, the nitrogen 2 oxide is now very hot. It is taken back to the heat exchanger for cooling. The role of the heat exchanger will preheat the incoming gases and also to cool the product. So when you have now the nitrogen 2 oxide, which has already been cooled, it is now cooled and taken to the oxidation chamber. And the oxidation chamber, as you can be able to see from this end, that the oxidizer, the nitrogen 2 oxide, that is, has been formed in the catalytic chamber and cooled, it, is, it reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen 2 oxide. So it is oxidized. That's why we, talk it, we, we call it the oxidizer or the oxidation chamber. So we remember we are also adding more purified air here. So that remember the, the air that was already purified. So now once now we have obtained the nitrogen 2 oxide, we also have unreacted nitrogen 2 oxide, which was not oxidized, and the air, they are recycled back. The unreacted air and nitrogen 2 oxide are recycled back to the compressor. Then we go to the absorption tower. In the absorption tower, we had water. Water is added in the absorption tower. And you can be able to see the nitrogen 2 oxide react with the water to form nitric 3 acid and nitric 5 acid. The nitric 3 acid is further oxidized by oxygen to get nitric 5 acid because it's very unstable. We can also get the overall equation whereby you get nitrogen 2 oxide plus water plus oxygen and you get nitric 5 acid as shown on the screen. Now, once you have obtained the nitric 5 acid, you now take it, or rather you are able to obtain the nitric 5 acid that would now be obtained, can be now uh, put in bottles, can be packaged uh, for transportation and uh, for storage. So, of course, the nitric 5 acid that is obtained in this process is 65% pure. It is 65% pure. So it is still given the stress symbol aqueous. So what are some of the questions that you can be able to get from this end? In any industrial process, you need to understand what are the raw materials, and they are well captured in that in this flowchart that's already in one page. The raw materials are also captured. The main equations are also captured. The equation in the catalytic chamber, the equation in the oxidizer, the equation at the absorption tower then they are also going to tell you that now if now you when you get this uh, nitric fiber acid, which is now 65 percent how can you increase the concentration of the nitric fiber acid you can increase the concentration of nitric fiber acid simply by using fractional distillation uh you'll also be asked a question like now nitric fiber acid should be colorless but the one, most of the nitric acid appears yellow. Why? This is because of the, the nitric fiber acid decomposes in presence of light or heat to form nitrogen four of it, which now makes it to appear, uh, to appear yellow. So it is due to presence of dissolved nitrogen four of it, which gives it its characteristic yellow color. Very important for you to be able to understand. Somebody will also ask you, what are the uses of the nitric fiber acid? 
and nitric acid is used in manufacture of dyes is also used in manufacture of ammonium sulfate not ammonium sulfate is used in manufacture of ammonium nitrate it is important for you to be able to understand that nitric five acid is used in manufacture of ammonium nitrate don't say it's used in manufacture of fertilizers specify the fertilizer manufacture of ammonium nitrate the same scenario will also apply for when you are told to give the use of ammonia it is used in manufacture of ammonium nitrate ammonium sulfate that is now for use of ammonia that is very much important for you to be able to understand so that you get the most correct answer that is going to score in an examination Another important question, you'll also be told to give the role of the heat exchanger that is used to heat the incoming gas and also to cool the product. Of course, you're also going to be asked about the catalyst. The catalyst is platinum, not rhodium. The rhodium is a promoter. It's very much important for you to be able to understand. You can also remember that uh, nitric acid is used in manufacture of the TNT. You also need to know the meaning of TNT, which is trinitrotoline. That is TNT is trinitrotoline. That is TNT. It is very much important for you to be able to understand that, that the meaning of TNT, let me, let's get it. The meaning of T and T is simply tri nitro trolling tri nitro trolling that the mist the meaning of the tnt because that is a very much important those are explosives that can be used as explosive that is the meaning of tnt remember nowadays they're asking students so many things the other day they were taught to give the meaning of DDT, CFC. So it is very much important for you to be able to understand what are the meaning of these initials that you find in the book. And we have come to the end of a very beautiful lesson. Remember to subscribe and hit on the notification button so that you can be notified when the Top Notch Online TV provides or rather uploads a new TV video. Until next time, bye-bye.